CIC is absolutely crucial and becoming more important as an industry body because we all realise that individual institutions with their specialist areas only have traction if they work together. So each of our area of knowledge only means something when it's combined with other areas of knowledge. And that was the far-sighted vision of Ted Happold and others who set up the CIC in the first place. A single, not only a single voice for the construction industry, but actually making all those voices work better together because on their own, they not only don't have uh, power vis-a-vis -vis governments and business and so on, but actually their very knowledge base is not as good as it would be if it was combined. So CIC means a lot to the RIBA. Uh, we believe it's, it is the vehicle for connecting with the other bodies. And I sort of believe that climate change means the CIC's hour has come. Key thing to understand is not so much climate change as such, but what it means to move into a completely different way of thinking about how we create the built environment, what carbon, the, the, what carbon means, what the criticality of carbon actually means. It means we have to measure things in a new way. We've been so used to money being the measure that we, it'll take us a while to understand the full implications of the limits of fossil fuels, of the limits of emissions that we must adopt and this will move us on to a new way of doing things. Just give you one example. So far, it's been very prevalent in the construction industry that you daisy chain the professions. If you like, you know, first you get X. Let's say it used to be the architect, then you add the engineer, then you go down the line a bit more and you add a quantity surveyor, then, or the other way around. Then you add the contractor, and then quite often the mechanical services are brought in by the contractor. This is the normal way of doing things. It's completely bust that way of doing things, unless we get all of those people together at the start, and particularly the engineering, the architecture, and the cost information together at the start, we won't be able to properly address the issues thrown up by climate change. I see, in a way, the most creative way of looking at the multi-institutional setup is to think of them as a design team. Actually, they ought to work together with the same sense of purpose as the design team has. So you're quite right, it's not just a team on a building site, in so far as we get really good teams, but the, really the, the agenda should be set by the way the professions work together in a much more creative way. And rather than, uh, you know, letting bureaucracy and the kind of ritual of co-working get in the way, we ought to be focused on projects in which we know what each of our contributions is. I've very recently come back from the Arctic where I went on a trip with a number of artists and musicians and scientists as well as one or two architects to look at what climate change is actually doing, how it's changing the landscape, how it's changing cultures in Greenland in this case for example. And it makes you realise that the world is going to be affected in very, very different ways from the impacts of climate change. It makes you realize how very focused and local you have to be about climate change, but at the same time, how we also have to have the global understanding. And this, to me, is, is what makes climate change such an important issue for the Construction Industry Council, because it is multidisciplinary. We were talking here about really changing culture. We're talking about communicating climate change. That's why the musicians and artists were there. The CIC, the step change it has to make is not only in working together, but in a new ability to communicate, to attract younger people to its mission. And if we can learn those new tricks, I think CIC will have a great future.